All right, we've come to the end of Unit 7. This is Lesson 7.6. We're going to be talking about something called elementary series. There are four that you definitely need to know. And we'll also make a few comments about what we call alternating series. So, in this section, and of course in this course, you're going to be using four elementary power series. You've actually seen these already. I'm just going to write them out for you. And by the way, another thing to add to your memorization list. Sine X. If you're curious where this came from, this was from lesson 7.5, I believe. If you look back, I think it was example number 4 on lesson 7.5. And this is what you had. Sine X is equal to X minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the power of 5 over 5 factorial minus x to the power of 7 over 7 factorial and we did a dot 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 and then you know you could write this as I think x to the power of 2 and plus 1 or minus 1 doesn't really make a difference I'll use 2 and plus 1 I think this time and then I'll put a negative 1 to the power n in front to show that it alternating from plus and minus. Okay. Cosine x. This one I believe was like example number two on 7.5 again. This begins with 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the power of 4 over 4 factorial minus x to the power of 6 over 6 factorial and so on and so forth plus, of course, negative 1 to the power n, x to the power 2n, 2n factorial, plus, 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 plus. Okay. Why do we need the plus, 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 plus again? Because once again, these are a series, they are infinite series, and you have to go plus dot, dot, dot to do so. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. E to the power x. This one, I think, was example number one, I believe. I think also from section 7.5. You can look back, by the way, in your notes. It's easier for you to flip the knee. 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Plus, da, 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 dot, plus x to the power of n over n factorial plus dot 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 yeah and there's this one natural log of x remember that one here yeah that was from I think two sections ago I think it was example number 9 in 7.4 I will rewrite this for you as I think x minus 1 minus x minus 1 all squared over 2 plus x minus 1 all cubed over 3 minus I should say and then dot 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 and then in general negative 1 to the power n x minus 1 raised to the power of n over n plus dot 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 and notice for this one, there's an interval of convergence that was only true for values of x between 0 and 2. For the other ones, the interval of convergences are for all values, all reals. Okay, cosine also all reals, all reals. Sine also all reals. Cool. So why do you need to memorize them? Because we're going to use these elementary series to create new power series. Okay. So, if you look at example number one, sine x squared. Well, that compares to sine x. And the difference here is where we see x to replace it with x squared. So, x squared minus, now x squared has to be cubed over 3 factorial plus, I guess, x squared to the power of 5 over 5 factorial, minus x squared to the power of 7 over 7 factorial, plus dot 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 dot, 
and negative 1 to the power n shows the alternating signs. Instead of having x to the power of 2n, it's x squared to the power of 2n plus 1, all over 2n plus 1, factorial, and so on and so forth. Okay? You can simplify, but I'm not. It's fine. How about cos root x? Same thing. Take 1 minus where we see x, replace it with root x. Let me show the first four terms. And then the general term, once again, negative 1 to the power n. Root x now to the power of 2n, all over 2n factorial. And then don't forget plus dot dot dot. Alright, next one. How about x c to the x? Well, now we're taking e to the x and just multiplying every single one of those by x. So 1 times x is x. x times x is x squared. x squared times x is x cubed over 2 factorial. x times x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 4 over 3 factorial. And this becomes now x to the power of n plus 1 over n factorial, and so on. Cool. About the fourth one now. 1 over x. I don't see 1 over x in my list up top as an elementary series. But what I do see is ln x. So, that's right. The derivative of ln x gives you 1 over x. So, take the derivative of this elementary series. The derivative of x minus 1 is just 1. The derivative of x minus 1 all squared is 2 bracket x minus 1 to the power of 1 divided by 2. The next term will be plus 3x minus 1 squared over 3. And I'll do one more, I guess. That'll be 4x minus 1 cubed over 4. And so on and so forth. Taking here the general term, negative 1 over n. I would be reducing the exponent by 1, n minus 1, and then dividing by, oops, I forgot to put n in front, right? Oopsies. Power rule, right? n times x minus 1 to the power n minus 1 divided by n. And if you want to simplify, I can do that. That's just 1 minus x minus 1 plus x minus 1 all squared minus x minus 1 to the power of 3 plus dot dot plus negative 1 to the power of n times x minus 1 to the power of n minus 1 and so on. See? Using the elementary series and taking its derivative. And what about this? Try and do an integral of natural log of x. So once again, I'm just going to integrate that power series from above. So notice I'm going to do the integral from 1 to t of x minus 1 minus x minus 1 all over 2 squared plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 and so on. x minus 1 power 4 over 4 and so on to dx. Let me give myself some more space. We will do the antiderivative of all these. That's x minus 1 to the power of 2 over 2 minus x minus 1 to the power of 3 over 2 times 3. I know it's 6, but I'm writing this for a reason. Uh, x minus 1 to the power of 4 over 3 times 4 minus x to the power of, or sorry, x minus 1 to the power of 5 over 4 times 5 and so on and so forth. We're going to then evaluate this at 1 to t. And so now we plug in the value of t. And let's see what we get. t minus 1 squared over 2 minus t minus 1 cubed over 2 times 3 plus t minus 1 to the power of 4 over 3 times 4, minus t minus 1 to the power of 5 over 4 times 5. I'm going to actually write the general term now. I hope you can see it too. 
t minus 1 to the power of, yeah, n plus 1. I guess you have a negative sign in front, so we have to do this factor of negative 1. In this case, to the power of n minus 1. And then the denominator seems to be 4 times 5, 5 times 6, and so forth. So that's just n times n plus 1. And so on and so forth. Of course, we would have to subtract off of that 1, but notice if I plug in 1, all the numerators just become 0, so you can say minus 0, but I'm just going to leave it as is. There you go. Okay. Now, notice here that in example 5 and also 4, the terms alternate from being positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. And that's the definition of an alternating series the terms alternate between positive and negative. So notice three out of the four elementary series, except for e to the x, are alternating ones. It's just an interesting fact. What do we do about alternating series, though? Well, we can now take a look at the next page, and let's see if we can use some tests. And here is something called the alternating series test, Notice this is a test for convergence, okay? So we're just looking at convergence. And what it says here is the following. If you've got a whole bunch of terms and they're bigger than zero, the alternating series where notice I've separated the term from the positive and negative portion, right? Negative 1 to the power n or negative 1 to the power n plus 1. So the a sub n part really is just the absolute value, okay? Absolute value of the terms. Just trying to separate out that positive negative, okay? If we look at those, and I say look at the next term compared to the previous or the current, and if the next term is always less than or equal to the current term, and if we take the limit as n approaches to infinity, it equals to zero, then we can conclude, therefore, by the alternating series test. Sometimes we use the definition or the notation AST. Okay, you get that it converges. Okay. So look at this example here. Determine the convergence or divergence of these series. <clears throat> I can ask you to just write out the terms if you can't see what this is. If n equals to 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, negative 1 to the power 2 is positive, so that's just 1 over 1. Taking a look at n equals to 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, this must be negative then, because it's negative 1 to the power 3. This is 1 over 2. And notice this becomes an alternating series, because the terms shift back and forth from positive to negative. <clears throat> notice too that the absolute value of the terms decrease in value, <coughs> right, one, then half, then third, then quarter, and so on. And so if I ask you to take the limit as n approach to zero of this, that's just one over n, we know that's zero, so because the terms decrease, that concludes that the step one is good, and because the limit of n approach to infinity equals zero, that's step two. We can then say by the alternating series test, and you do need to quote the test, we know that this series converges. Okay. Now we can do the same thing for number seven. I'll let you try this yourself. Try to come up with the terms. Tell me if they're decreasing, and then tell me the limit. And then decide if it's now, converging or diverging. So, plugging in 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so the first term is positive. It's 1 plus 1 is 2 over 1, which is 2. Next term after that, we plug in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, so that means negative. Uh, 2 plus 1 is 3 over 2. The next one I think is 4 over 3. The next one over that is 5 over 4 and so on. Notice in this case, if I take the absolute value of the terms, can you see how it's 2, then 1.5, then 1.3, then 1.25, so they also decrease. So that's good. Step 1 is okay. Now let's take the limit as n approach to infinity. This time you get n plus 1 over n, 
Notice by the n behavior model, then we should be looking at n over n, which just equals to 1. Notice that this does not equal to 0, so the second one does not hold. So therefore, the alternating series test for convergence just tells us that it doesn't converge. Does that automatically say that it diverges? The answer is no. But if you do recall from a few lessons ago, we did have the nth term test for divergence. And that said, if the limit as n approach to infinity of the terms does not equal 0, we know that it diverges. So therefore, I would not say by the alternating series test, but I'll say by the nth term test, because the limit here is not equal to 0, we know the series diverges. So the nth term test is used for divergence, highlight that. The alternating series test is used for convergence, highlight that. And when you have a geometric series, we get both diverging and converging series depending on the radius, or the ratio, sorry, or what I call the interval of convergence. Okay? Those are the tests we've got so far for Unit 7. You'll find out a whole bunch more in Unit 8. But until then, let's just solidify our understanding of Unit 7 topics and practice, practice, practice.